I wasn't even going to comment about this because, frankly, I didn't really give a shit. But something brought me into it. Um, Ring of Honor news. The uh, triumphant return this past week of Kenny King to Ring of Honor Wrestling. Um, as everybody remembers, well, I'm actually, I say that probably 20% of the audience maybe remembers. About three years ago, Kenny King bailed on Ring of Honor, went back on his uh, uh, commitment, and went to TNA. And it was a big story at the time amongst the Ring of Honor fans. I'm sure most of the normal folks don't really give a shit, and I didn't give a shit, except he brought me back into it. Kenny King returned to Ring of Honor, and some. And once again, I don't listen to. I don't even listen to my own podcast. To be honest, folks, I don't listen to a lot of stuff on the internet. But people send me shit, and somebody sent me a link to an interview that Kenny King had done, and said, "What do you think about what he had to say?" You know, he alluded to you. So, I of course, when somebody says that, you got to listen, right? So I listened to it, and here here was his his quote. I wrote it down so I wouldn't misrepresent what he said he was talking about how he came back to ring of honor and that he'd kept relationships with some of the people there and etc etc and he didn't mention my name but he said one person didn't understand business is business but that person is gone so obviously you know and so let me explain to you now since this has been brought up and he opened this this door what the deal was with Kenny King and why I say that Kenny King is the biggest lying sack of shit in professional wrestling. Oh like, goodness. first of all, Kenny King is, is a fucking preliminary wrestler and a fucking male stripper is going to educate me on what's, what's about the wrestling business, right? Like, I'm going to tell him how to shake his dick in front of fucking people, and, and, and he's going to tell me about the wrestling business, right? Here was the thing. And and I didn't dislike Kenny King. As a matter of fact, I tried to do, and I've I've talked about this in other interviews. People say I don't take credit, you know, take credit, take blame for mistakes I made. I did. I said the biggest mistake that I made the whole time I was with Ring of Honor was believing Kenny King and and trusting him on a handshake. So we're going to talk about that story. Um, Kenny King and Rhett Titus were the All Night Express. They were a tag team that was put together. Mid-card team, Austin Aries was their manager when he was trying to con Kerry Silken out of still being the highest paid guy in, in the company, but yet <laughs> not wrestling, just managing. And Austin Aries is a, a malcontent also and, and a miserable human being, but at least he's an incredibly talented motherfucker, and I've never said he's not. He's just a miserable guy to be around, and we had to fire him, right? But he was managing Kenny King and Rhett Titus, who were a mid-card tag team, and after he was, after we fired Aries, uh, we were still using Kenny and Rhett because it wasn't their fault. And they got, they started getting over because we had two money teams in Ring of Honor the Briscoe brothers, Mark and Jay, who, for my money, pound for pound, whole nine yards, are the, are the greatest tag team in wrestling right now. Can't write those guys, you couldn't make them up in the ring, on the microphone, as human beings. I love the Briscoe brothers. And we had another money tag team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, who were, everybody knew who they were because they'd been on national TV, but they were great athletes, great amateurs. They could fucking go. They looked like grown adult men who could beat somebody. So we had two money teams in, in Haas and Benjamin and the Briscoes. But they couldn't wrestle each other every Ring of Honor show ever. So we had to have other tag teams, and that's where we, we would occasionally break them apart, the Briscoes and Haas and Benjamin, and put them in programs with other tag teams to make it fresh. And the All Night Express, in a program with the Briscoe brothers, this was before Sinclair even bought the company, they got over because of the program with the Briscoe brothers. And I will, I will say that most of that was due to Rhett Titus because Kenny King is a great athlete, fantastic athlete. He can jump, and he's agile, and he's quick, and he, he was a very good athlete. He was not a very good fucking wrestler or worker because a lot of people don't know this, but 
uh, Kenny's primary job was being a male stripper in Las Vegas. I'm not kidding about this. But I'm serious. And he didn't actually book himself on any other wrestling shows unless they happen to be in Las Vegas. But Ring of Honor, his primary thing was he was going to be a male stripper and fuck all the hoes, right? Um, whereas Rhett would go out and he would book himself everywhere he could to get better, to get experience. So Kenny's problem was that he, he used this athleticism, but nobody bought him as a tough guy and as a fighter and, uh, you know, and his work, he had matches where he would use the athleticism and he would try to go overboard with these spots. And a lot of it was sloppy. And he'd hit half of them and he'd miss half of them. So it was kind of, eh. but as a team together, because Rhett's one drawback was he wasn't a very good promo. And Kenny could talk a little bit. So he, he did the promo good, but Rhett is the guy that really got him over in that program with the Briscoes because he was willing to bleed and fight. And as a matter of fact, uh, Rhett Titus and, and Jay Briscoe in the ring at center stage in Atlanta WrestleMania weekend, I believe it was 2010, Reminded me of the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum in the old days. They had a slobber knocker. And over those, the period of those matches, the All Night Express started getting over. And we started using them in a higher profile position. And finally it came down to, in, in, in 2012, it was going to be uh, the All Night Express. They were having a program with Haas and Benjamin. Red had had a knee injury, had been out for a while, came back too quick in my estimation, and I think it hurt him for quite a while, both his conditioning and just his overall quality of his matches, because he, Red was a classic overachiever. He would do anything. He would work as hard as he could. He wasn't naturally athletically gifted like Kenny, but he worked his ass off. And, and I think he came back too quick. But anyway, we had him in a program with Haas and Benjamin, and it came down to a point where if the All Night Express didn't win the tag team title, they were going to be pretty much dead. If they got beat again, you know, they were going to be dead as an attraction for us. And Hunter Johnston, Delirious, and I both got together and said, these guys need to beat Haas and Benjamin and win these belts. But there was one problem. Kenny's contract was coming up for renewal mere days after this match. Uh, Rhett's was good because the deal is we offered him both two-year contracts at the start of the, the Sinclair era, but Kenny only wanted to sign for a year because he said, I'm going to be 30, and I'm thinking about, you know, I might not continue wrestling. He didn't want it. He didn't have the fucking passion for the wrestling business. He wanted to be a TV star. He wanted to get the fucking hose. He wanted to, you know, get the rats and, and all that shit. He just didn't want to work for it. And... He basically told us in, in 2011, I'm thinking about in the next year, I'm going to quit the business. I only want a one-year contract. All right. So the contract was going to be up. So we went to him, <clears throat> Hunter and I, and we said, uh, Kenny, you know, here's the situation. We want to put the belts on you guys, but your contract is about to be up. Are you going to quit the business? Are you going to resign? We'd like to resign you. We're not going to switch these belts if you're not going to be around. We'd like to know what's going on. And he sat down, he said to us, he said, well, he said, I've had some contact with somebody at TNA and I might have the opportunity to go there. And this was at a time when before Hogan and Bischoff and Russo, Russo had bankrupted Dixie Carter to where that they were still paying more money than Ring of Honor was. And so we both, because we'd both been talent, we both been one of the boys and we could understand that. Well, does, you know, does he want to get one, one big money run or big money run what does he want to get one good pay and run before he, he gets out we can understand that but i said he wouldn't tell us who he'd talk to he wouldn't tell us what the percentages were of of, of you know whether there was a chance he was going to get the job or not we said look are you sure about this no i'm not sure about anything i just i've got the chance to maybe try all right well here's the thing y'all are going to be deader than kelsey's nuts if you don't win these belts at, I believe it was best in the world. It was at the Hammerstein in New York in June of, of 2012. So on a maybe, do you want to give this opportunity up? Tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We will give you in writing a 90 day extension to your contract, Kenny. If you will sign that, we will also give you in writing a clause that says you are free during this 90 day period to negotiate with TNA wrestling. And if you can get a deal and you want to go there and you want to take it, 
Then at the end of the 90 days, drop the belts back and you can go. And this is all in writing. And if you don't get the deal, then we haven't ruined the All Night Express as an attraction. And, and you can either continue to run with the belts or you can say you're going to quit the business and you drop the belts anyway and go on and we're, we'll all part friends. And he shook both of our hands on that. He agreed to it. He said, that's a good deal because we were trying to help the fucking guy. And that's why this is my first mistake. <laughs> this, is, this, is my, this was my mistake was trying to help one of the boys because, as I've mentioned many times, the boys are their own worst enemies. Um, so we made that deal. And we went to Best in the World at New York, and the contract was there. Actually, Hunter had it in, in, on paper in his briefcase and gave it to Kenny. And, of course, it's a pay-per-view, and it's New York, and, it's, and we're understaffed, and we're overstressed. And we basically, and this was my fault because I was the one supposed to be in charge of talent, even though Hunter was the booker. It was my fault. I should have made sure the contract was signed, but we got distracted. I didn't think about it. We gave them a finish, and Kenny didn't like the finish. He didn't, the first guy in wrestling history winning the World Tag Team title didn't like the finish because he wanted to do this deal. He was always picking up one of these whores, you know, wherever the fuck, and he would bring them to the ring like the All Night Express parties with all these women, and they'd wear the short skirt and everything. Well, that's fine. It fit the fucking gimmick. I just I didn't I didn't particularly like the idea of smartening up these fucking douchebag whores that he would pick up to fucking go to the ring and and it basically smartening them up or whatever. But it fit the fucking gimmick. So what he wanted to do was he wanted to beat Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, and he wanted to have a big fucking celebration in the ring where they'd have a champagne bottle and they'd have this fucking whore in this micro mini skirt and blah, blah, blah. He said, no, here's the fucking deal. They're going to beat the shit out of you guys. You guys are going to make a big comeback. It's going to be a four-way. There's going to be some shit going on. It's going to look like that Haas and Benjamin are going to win, and then suddenly Hail Mary out of nowhere like baby faces do. You guys are going to win, hit the floor, and fucking the people are going to fucking be patting you on the back and celebrating, but you're going to be selling the effects of the match, and Haas and Benjamin are going to be in the ring going, what the fuck happened? And that way it leaves it open to rematches. It doesn't harm either team because you guys won the belts, but at the same time, Haas and Benjamin can say we were robbed, it was a fucking fluke, and we can leave it open to rematches. Well, he didn't like that. Because Kenny King's a fucking mark for himself. And he thought he was a lot better than he is. Because did I mention he's a preliminary fucking wrestler? He had never been over. He had never drawn a fucking dime. This was the first time he ever had a top fucking spot. But he's okay, all right, whatever the fuck. Well, they go out there and they do the match exactly as they're supposed to do. And then at the end, when they hit the floor, then as I remember this, and I'd have to go back and watch the tape to give you specifics, but basically somehow the champagne bottle got out there again and the horror and the micro miniskirt was out there and they were starting to try to celebrate, even though Rhett was trying to do what he was supposed to do. And it, Charlie, and ha uh, Charlie and Haas, Charlie and Shelton had to actually jump out of the ring and start beating them on, on them again because they were ruining the whole fucking thing because Kenny is a mark for himself and had to win the belts and had to get this celebration in and et cetera. And then Charlie and Shelton come back hot and I have to apologize to them. I said, he don't fucking get it. He's like most of the guys in the business these days. He don't fucking get it. But anyway, we got past that. And then afterwards, after everybody left the building, I asked Hunter, I said, shit, did you get that contract signed? He said, no. I said, fuck. I said, you don't think he's trying to fucking play ha ha, do you? He said, no, Kenny's been here so long and I know him. He's a friend of mine. Okay. Well, in six days, we're going to be at TV. We'll get it signed there. So the next weekend was a TV taping in Baltimore, and we got him at interviews. And we said, Kenny, we need to get the contract signed. Well, well, what? Well, here, and this is a quote, folks. This is exactly what he said, and I've said this before a few years ago. If you want to track it down, I'm not making shit up, you know, out of my ass. He said to us, he said, well, I don't think I can sign it. I said, what do you mean you can't sign it? We, we shook hands. We made a deal. You've got everything you want. You, we're not trying to prevent you from leaving. We're just, we want to make sure that we're covered and you can still negotiate with these people. Well, here's the thing. I thought it was a good deal when I agreed to it, but I've talked to other people since then that said that it wasn't a good deal, so I can't honor it. 
That's exactly what this lying sack of shit said. I said, what the fuck? He said, well, I said, who, who said this? Well, I can't tell you that. I said, are you trying to fucking, oh, no, 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 no. I just, you know, I, I just, I can't sign a deal, but everything's fine. And I, st- I, then I, once again, I went to Hunter and I said, is this guy, he said, no, he wouldn't do that to us. He wouldn't do it to Rhett. Rhett's his friend. He's been here for all these years. You know, somebody's in his head, but whatever. I said, well, TV was already written that weekend and we already had cards coming up. I said, we need to take these fucking belts off of them at the house shows next month because I don't trust the guy. But, you know, I should have I should have rewritten TV. But we, once again, we had a lot of shit on our fucking plate and rewriting the entire fucking shows that we were doing ourselves was treacherous at best. So anyway, the guy does TV. The guy we and the last thing we said to him, I, I said, Kenny, I said, you can talk to him. So you get your deal. Let us know what's going on. The only thing that you cannot do is work on a show in front of fans. You could even do a tryout if you want to before the door is open. Don't work on a show in front of the people while you still have our belts because that will be your instant notice and we'll all be in a lot of fucking trouble. <clears throat> I said, otherwise than that, you get your deal, you do what you want to do, you let us know, and we'll act accordingly. And you know how, Alice, how people actually don't verbally agree with something, but they kind of nod where you think you've made your point and there's been no disagreement, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we got. Okay. And, and once again, in hindsight, I should have known. I should have seen it in his fucking face. I should have known what he was doing. And it's all my fault. That was on a Saturday. On a fucking, it was either the next Tuesday or Wednesday. I forget which. But I was headed home in the car from Baltimore from doing post-production on the TVs when Hunter calls, calls me on my cell phone. Kenny King just called me. He's in Orlando. So this motherfucker, and actually, after the TV taping, it, it, Hunter saw him the next day because I was doing pro- post-production, but they were at a show in Pittsburgh. Three days before he shows up in Orlando at Universal Studios at the TNA fucking TV taping, he saw Hunter Johnston, and he couldn't look him in the eye and say, I'm going, I'm going to do a tryout. This has already been arranged. He was a mark for himself. He had to win the fucking belts because he wanted to. He didn't care about the company. He didn't care about his partner. He didn't care about us. He didn't care about the deal he had made and shook hands on. He didn't care about anything else except I'm going to win the belts before I leave. And then I'm going to go down there and try to get a guaranteed contract and fuck whatever word I've given because that's no good. Because did I mention he's a professional stripper that shakes his dick in front of people for money? So he calls Hunter. He says, well, I'm at TNA. I'm at Universal down here. I'm at fucking the studio. And they may want me to work. And I said, what the fuck? And he called me. And so we both called Kenny and said, what the fuck are you doing? Why didn't you tell? Well, it, it just came up. I just came down here to Florida where he lives in Las Vegas. I just came down here to Florida to visit, I don't know, some ex-girlfriend that he's procreated with, some kid or whatever the fuck. I don't know. He's probably got kids all over America because I mentioned he associates with a lot of whores. Um, and they, they might want me to work now. I said, if you do that, you're fucking notice immediately, motherfucker. What did we just fucking say? You Now you're going back on our deal? And now you, you didn't even bother to tell us you, well, it just came up like he got a, I know TNA, they didn't buy a goddamn 24 hour advance notice fucking plane ticket, right? <laughs> they're, they're too cheap for that. He, he fucking hid all of this so that he could win the belts so he could be a mark for himself in New York and he could beat Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin and he could be a ring of honor world tag team champion. And then he could go down there and fuck everybody. So he did work that night, and we immediately put up on the goddamn website that he had gone back on an agreement that we had, and they were stripped of the belts and blah, blah, blah. And then TNA didn't even use him for fucking months after that. Uh, And then finally they talked him into that fucking group. I don't know what their name was, the beat-down clan or the beat-off clan or whatever. He's a jack-off, so he ought to be in the beat-off fucking clan. And, And But still, he didn't get a big guaranteed contract. Uh, But that's what happened, folks, with Kenny King. And then he's been there on and off 
uh, in TNA since then, but now that TNA is so broke they can't pay attention and, you know, ain't paying him anymore, then he somehow comes back to Ring of Honor. And I'm going to say this. I'm not saying anything bad about Hunter Johnston. Delirious. I loved working with him. He's a good friend of mine. I think he's incredibly intelligent. I think he is one of the best bookers that I've ever worked with. I've said that before, along with Kevin Sullivan. I enjoyed working with Hunter creatively more than anybody um, that, that in history. I don't think he should have allowed this. I think he made a mistake because I think that sets a bad precedent because I think that it tells everybody, well, we can lie to people and we can fuck people around and we can come back anytime. And it's not like Kenny King's a big fucking draw. He's a preliminary fucking wrestler. I want somebody to make a list of all the four-star Kenny King matches and send it to me. That'd be a short fucking list. Wouldn't take a lot of fucking paper. So I think they made a bad mistake in letting this guy that fucked the company, that fucked his tag team partner, that fucked... And, and Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin came to me after that and said, well, yeah, you talked to... Because Kenny King couldn't fucking whip Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin for real. <laughs> If he had a goddamn AK-47 in his hand, they did me a favor by putting this unknown motherfucker over to, to help business, and then he fucked them. He fucked them, he fucked the roster, he fucked the company, he fucked us, he fucked everybody because he's a fucking lying sack of shit. And I had to apologize to them, had apologized to fucking Joe Coff and everybody else. I, I, I wanted to help one of the boys, and, and as a result, I got my ass bit for it. And to let him come back after what he did when he didn't have to, when he could have just been up front with us and said, you know what? I got a chance to go to TNA. I think they're going to fucking take it. Then we just wouldn't have fucking switched the fucking belts and everything would have been fine and everybody could have left happy. But he made a deal with us just to get the belts because he's a mark for himself. Did I mention that? And then he fucked everybody around. And to let him come back, I think, is bullshit, especially when he couldn't draw 15 cents in Chinese money. He couldn't draw a goddamn fucking dollar bill if you gave him a green crayon. He's a fucking lying sack of shit. And he's a, and he, instead of now shaking his dick in front of people for fucking money in Las Vegas, he fucking shook his dick in front of fucking Ring of Honor, and they, uh, they somehow let him come back. And I'd just like to say that is the truth. That's actually what happened. I would love for somebody to dispute it because I have the facts. I have documentation. And Kenny, if you got anything to say to me, motherfucker, motherfucker, that's right, motherfucker. If you got anything to say to me, don't say it on Twitter. Don't do a fucking podcast. Call me up on the phone because I got the same fucking phone number I did when you fucked us the last time when we were working together. You can call me. What are you going to say to me, Kenny? What are you going to say to me? You're going to say, hey, I don't appreciate you telling the truth about me in public because that's all you can say because that's exactly what I just did. So fuck you, Kenny King. You're a fucking lying sack of shit. And I think you're a goddamn cancer to the fucking locker room and a piece of shit and a cancer to the fucking wrestling business. So fuck you, anybody that likes you, anybody that looks like you, anybody that's on your fucking side because you're a lying sack of shit.